All right, so Tesla's Q1 2022 deliveries and production numbers are out, and this is what they look like. Tesla produced a total of about 305,000 cars in the quarter, and they delivered about 310,000 cars in the quarter. If we compare this to quarter four 2021, which was the previous three months before Q1, it's about a 1% increase quarter over quarter. But more importantly, if we take the Q1 results from 2021 and we compare them to Q1 2022, we have roughly a 68% increase year over year for the quarterly deliveries. Now, if you're somebody who has followed Tesla, you're probably not surprised to see such big growth year over year. But there are a few things that are still very impressive about this quarterly report. One is that Tesla was able to achieve this without introducing any new facilities during that time period. So from one year to the next, they were able to increase their production by 68% or their deliveries rather by 68% without having to do anything but to just push more units through what they already had. Another thing that's very impressive is that Q1 of each year is seasonally the weakest quarter for any automaker. So when automakers make cars, quarter one of 2021 is usually the lowest quarter for them because the holidays are over and traditionally people don't like to buy cars in the winter. Even with that, Tesla was able to post an increase quarter over quarter Q1 2022 versus Q4 of 2021 of roughly 1%. Now the numbers that I just went through our global sales for Tesla. But what's really interesting here is if we take the sales figures from other automakers and we compare their US sales growth quarter over quarter, I think this really starts to paint a much broader picture that there's something much bigger going on. And this quarter is truly a watershed moment for Tesla and the entire auto industry. Here's a sampling of how other automakers performed in the United States in quarter one, 2022 versus quarter one, 2021. And what's really important here is that this is Q1 versus Q1 of the previous year. So this is the seasonally slow quarter for an automaker versus the previous year's seasonally slow quarter. So it's an apples to apples comparison. And another thing to also keep in mind is that Q1 of 2021 was still suffering from a tremendous amount of pressure pressure from COVID, the supply chain issues that we were having, and we were much closer to the pandemic era difficulties than we are today in Q1 2022. Toyota sales are down 14.7% Q1 2022 versus Q1 2021. GM or General Motors is down 20%. Ford is predicted to have a 17% decline. Stellantis is predicted to have a 13% decline. And Honda is down 23%. This data is pulled from investors.com, which is a combination of predictions from analysts on where the automakers are going to end up in the quarter and also reported figures from the automakers themselves. One thing to keep in mind is that this is US auto sales, but given the scale of these companies, these results are very likely to be very similar in other markets as well. In essence, the companies are not going to be growing year over year. In the best case scenario, they're going to be flat and for them to be flat for the quarter, they would require their other markets to be up by as much as they're down in the US market, which is highly, highly unlikely. Likely. So the big takeaway here is that these automakers are very, very likely to be at least a little bit down, if not a lot down in Q1 2022 versus Q1 2021. Now, if we compare this to the Q1 2022 results from Tesla and we compare this to the Q1 2021 results, Tesla is up 68% globally. And the more impressive thing about that year over year growth Q1 versus Q1 is that Tesla has done this with a multi day or multi week shutdown in Shanghai because of holidays and the COVID lockdowns that they've had in that area, as well as supply chain constraints that are still hurting other automakers. Now it stands to reason that Tesla's challenges are likely to be very similar to the other automakers because Tesla is going to source a number of parts that's going to be equivalent to the size of the products that they push. Think of it this way, Ford, GM and other car companies are going to have a much larger percentage share of the parts that are produced by these suppliers and Tesla is going to have a much smaller percentage in relation to those car companies, yet they're still able to grow year over year. This is a very fundamental point. Tesla is able to grow regardless of whatever difficulties they're facing, even the difficulties that are shared across every single auto manufacturer. Tesla is just able to overcome this better. So the big takeaway for me in this quarter is that Tesla's growth quarter over quarter, Q4 versus Q1, is still impressive because you're in a seasonally low quarter in Q1, even with supply chain challenges and not 
having two factories going, you're still growing, even though it's a very small amount, 1%, you're still growing where the rest of the competition is massively down year over year. And so if we make a quick assumption here and say, okay, if the supply chain challenges didn't exist, if Berlin and Austin were both going full bore, if the COVID shutdowns in Shanghai and the different holidays that they experienced weren't there for a quarter, what could a quarterly report look like for Tesla in relation to its competition? And so we can do some very quick math here. Let's assume that the 310,000 deliveries in Q1 were restricted because of the things we talked about. And if those restrictions were lifted, let's just conservatively assume that they're able to do 10% more cars in the quarter which gives us a total of 340,000 cars a quarter. We can assume for this exercise that this is the maximum capacity for Fremont and Shanghai. This is likely not the case because it can probably squeeze other things out of the factory through different changes in the process or machinery or the way they make the cars flow out of the factory. There's a bunch of different ways to increase capacity. But for this exercise, let's just assume that 340,000 cars a quarter is Fremont and Shanghai's true maximum capacity. If you layer in Berlin and all Austin and assume that those two factories combined are going to be able to do the same level of production than a Fremont and a Shanghai combined. You just have to simply double that 340,000 car number to end up with what Tesla's potential true maximum capacity is today, <laughs> right now, once that Berlin and Austin factory gets ramped. And that number is 682,000 cars a quarter. If you annualize this to a yearly rate, this is roughly 2.7, 2.8 million cars per year. And what's really interesting is that this could very well happen in the next year. It might be Q1 of next year. It might be Q4 of next year, but it's there. The capacity has already been built to have at least 2.7 to 2.8 million cars per year. And if you put this in relation to a Ford, which of course is going to ship mostly pickup trucks and Mustangs, Ford does about 4 million vehicles a year. And once Tesla reaches that 2.7 million cars a year number, they're already going to be at 70% of Ford's total production capacity with similar margins. If you look at Tesla's quarterly earnings and Ford's quarterly earnings, you can very easily see that Tesla is going to be able to make just as much, if not vastly more money than Ford. And this could happen as quickly as next year. And I think this is really the big picture takeaway from Q1. And for me, that is the biggest takeaway from this Q1 earnings report is that the watershed moment has arrived. Now we have solid data that shows that automakers are struggling to grow. If anything, they are shrinking. They'll cite supply chain constraints and they'll cite these different reasons as to why this is happening. But make no mistake that a demand cliff for these automakers is a very real thing. And as the quarters go on, as Q2 comes and as Q3 comes and as Tesla's deliveries continue to rocket upwards towards that 2.7 million car number, which let's remind you again, doesn't include Cybertruck doesn't include the $25,000 car, which is probably gonna be 30,000 because of inflation, but whatever, that cheaper car. They're still gonna be growing at a breakneck speed, while every other automaker that's not making a vast number of electric cars is gonna keep going down. So how is this gonna influence the narrative in the media? And how is that going to influence the narrative with the stock market folks, the investors, the analysts, okay? This is becoming extremely obvious now for those of us that follow Tesla very closely. But I think starting this quarter, it's gonna become much, much more obvious for the broader picture. And I expect to see a humongous tone shift from these automakers that go from, oh my God, we're having supply chain constraints to, oh my God, we're not selling enough cars. We are in big trouble. And of course I could be very wrong. Of course I could be reading into this a little too much, but this quarterly report was a big deal. It was a huge deal. Sure, Q4 versus Q1, not a big increase, but put it within the picture of the entire market, of the entire industry, and this is without a doubt a watershed moment. A huge thing is happening, and it's slowly happening, but it's happening. And I think now is the time for everyone else to realize that Tesla is not just here to stay, but it's here to grow in a market where everyone else is sinking. And that is both exciting, but also a little scary. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you throw me a like. If you'd like to support this channel, I have a link to my Patreon in the description below, or you can also join the channel by clicking join right below this video. And if you're interested, I have a special deal with Athletic Greens, which is a supplement that I take every single morning, which I really, really trust. More details for that in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.